While I was initially tempted to make an unboxing video, but that's just not my style in my channel. So I thought I would like to take you through everything about my iPhone from the unboxing to all the accessories I picked up and my go-to apps I actually use on a daily basis. I'm also going to share how I set up my camera for vlogging and what apps I use for photo editing later in this video. Let's dive into the unboxing. I went for the 14 Pro in silver with 512GB of storage. I was using the 13 Pro before, which was still working perfectly fine. And you might be curious as to why I upgraded. Well, if I wasn't a product designer working on iOS platforms at work, I would have held on to it until it started causing problems. When the 14 models were released last year, I was lucky enough to get my hands on one as a testing device from work. But because I was still using the 13 Pro as my primary phone without the dynamic island feature, I kind of started feeling like I need to expose myself to this feature and to truly explore for work. So this is why I decided to upgrade. Okay, now let's install a screen protector. This is something I always do as soon as I get a new phone. I have used the same brand on my previous iPhone, and I just loved how easy it was to install. So I decided to buy the same brand again. Installing this screen protector is like a breeze, and it's actually a genius invention. You know, like how difficult it is to install a screen protector on your phone, right? It's really hard to align it perfectly, and even if you do, there are often bubbles that remain. That's why I personally think this screen protector is probably one of the best iPhone accessories out there. Let me show you the cases I picked up for my new phone. Just in case you're also interested in, I'll make sure you can find the links down below. First off, I got this puffer jacket case from Amazon. It's not MagSafe compatible, but I couldn't really resist its adorable design. I also got this plain, transparent, MagSafe compatible case also from Amazon, which I plan to use for everyday use until my Case Defy cases arrived. A couple of weeks later, I finally got my Case Defy cases. Moving on, I want to share some new chargers I've been using lately. The first one is the Anchor Magnetic Portable Charger. I actually got two of them to use as stands on my desk for work because I couldn't really find any good magnetic stands without charging functionality, but I actually found them to be very handy as a portable chargers when I'm on the go. I can also keep them uncharged so they can just work perfectly as a stands. Next up, I got this wireless charger from Etsy for my bedroom side table. Before this, I've also used both like stand charger and magnetic one before, but I actually found them to be kind of impractical. For instance, when using a magnetic charger, if I need to check my phone or like turn off my alarm while it was charging and I'm still in bed, I kind of found it frustrating to have to reach over and grab my phone from the charger. That's why I was looking for something more convenient that I could casually place my phone on and just easily grab it. I've been using this charger for a few weeks now and I actually love how it looks and how accessible my phone has become, but the only downside I would say is that I have to find the perfect angle to place it down to make it charged. Now let's take a look at my home screen. I've divided into three main sections that make it easier for me to navigate. As for the wallpaper, I actually bought a pack from this YouTuber, which I will link down below as well. Thanks for the great wallpapers. Starting with the work section, I've gathered all the apps that I use during my work days. You might notice that I've actually placed Slack in the Essential section instead of here. That's only because I wanted to keep four apps in a row for aesthetic purposes. Moving on to the Essential section, I've got all my most used apps, including Photos, Phone, Messages, Spotify, Safari, Spark, and Craft. I'll go into more details about those apps later. Lastly, we have the Entertainment section which features a reminder widget stacked with three lists. 
reminders, tracking packages, and grocery list. It's actually really convenient to have all my to-do lists and package tracking info in one place. I've been using this grocery list for ages. Whenever I unexpectedly stop by a grocery store, I can quickly check my list and pick up what's on the list. To keep my home screen looking clean and organized, I've been using two different tools, Clear Spaces and IMT. Clear Spaces allows me to create transparent widgets, while IMT helps me fill in the gaps with transparent app icons. Let's start with Clear Spaces. You can find it in the App Store, and you actually have to purchase for $1.99 US dollars. I still highly recommend purchasing it if you change your wallpaper frequently, but if you know any better apps, let me know, because I'm not really confident that like this is the best one, but I like it so far. Once you download the app, long press on your home screen and swipe left until you reach the last section of the home screen where there were no icons. This is where you can take a screenshot of the empty home screen. Open the app and create a new style. I always choose to unload the screenshot in both modes. Once the style is checked, now go back to your home screen and long press to add a widget. Then select the clear spaces widget from the list. You can choose from three different sizes with your preference. If you want to center the widget, just a long press it and set the position to middle. You can also customize a widget by adding different options such as a date or weather from the information options section. Now onto IMT. Let's say you have a large transparent widget at the top of your home screen that can accommodate up to 8 apps, but you only want to display 4 apps. That's where IMT comes in to fill the gaps. First, go to this link and unload the screenshot you took earlier. You will see app icon slots that are pre-populated on the wallpaper you unloaded. Select the boxes you want to fill and click the install button. Once it's downloaded, go to your settings and search for VPN. Tap on VPN and device management. And then they will appear on your home screen. And now you can move them around to fit your desired layout. Oh, and one more thing, if you want to keep your home screen clean and organized, even as you download more apps, you can simply go to settings, tap on home screen, and select app library only instead of add to home screen. This way, you won't see new apps clearing up your home screen. Moving on to the control center, and let's take a look at how I have it set up. I use Control Center all the time, and there are a few functionalities that I find particularly useful that I want to share with you. First up is the Shazam. I often use this to identify a song that I hear but I don't know the name of. I only wish I could add the songs directly to my Spotify playlist. Next is the Apple TV remote. While I primarily use the actual physical remote, having the option to use my phone as a backup has been pretty helpful on occasion, especially when the actual remote is lost or not functioning properly. So with this, I can easily navigate through my Apple TV with taps and swipes on my phone screen just as I would with the physical remote. Lastly, I've set up accessibility shortcuts for turning assistive touch on and off easily to take a screenshot with a single tap and lock the screen with a long press. If you'd like to customize it to yourself, then go to settings, search for assistive touch, and tap on customize top level menu. Remove all icons except for one and select the icon to choose the functionality you want from the list, such as screenshot. You can even adjust the opacity if you want. Once you set it up, you can turn it on and off from Control Center manually as needed. Let's dive into the apps I literally use every day. First is Craft. Craft has become one of my go-to apps in my life. I tried out so many note-taking apps before, and Craft has been the best fit for me for almost a year now. When it comes to note-taking and project management, one of the most important things for me is cross-platform availability. Craft delivers on that front. And Craft excels in all three areas I need. Project management. I need to be able to manage my projects. 
note taking. I need to be able to create documents and keep them organized. And daily task management. I need to be able to manage my daily to-do list. I tried out with the free plan first, actually, and I end up signing up for the personal pro plan to use cross-platform search functionality. I actually found myself that I use this functionality like a lot throughout the day. The good news is Craft is now available on Setup. So if you are already a subscriber to Setup's Mac Plus iOS plan, then you can actually access Craft's additional features without having to sign up separately. For those who haven't heard of Setup yet, Setup is the place where you can get over 240 powerful paid Mac and iOS apps with a single monthly subscription. With so many apps available on the market, it can be difficult to find the right ones for your needs. That's where Setup comes in. Their selection of apps is carefully curated to cover a wide range of use cases, so you can find the best tools without feeling overwhelmed by endless options out there. One of the best things about Setup is its IA-driven search functionality. Whenever you have a task to do, you can just simply type it in, and Setup will suggest the best tools to help you get it done. Let me share some of my favorite apps from Setup that I had even purchased individually before. CleanShot is hands down one of my favorite screen recording apps for Mac. Clean My Mac is an all-in-one app for Mac that cleans, optimizes, and protects your computer. TechSniper extracts text from any graphics, documents, or videos, making note-taking obsolete. Mosaic is my go-to window manager app that lets me resize and organize windows and switch between layouts in seconds. With Setup, you don't need to worry about managing licenses or subscriptions for individual apps. You can get access to all these apps and even more for only $9.99 a month. And now, Setup is offering a 7-day free trial, so you can see for yourself how it can power up your productivity. Next is Repeat, another great app available through Setup as well. I've been using it for just a couple weeks now, but I am already in love with how simple and easy it is to start new habits and stick to them. While the app suggests healthy habits to try out, but I think I found it more beneficial to create my own ones that I want to cultivate. So for me, the best part is streak tracking feature. So seeing my progress visually and watching my streaks grow is incredibly motivating. And here's a look at my personal ones, which I arrange from morning to evening. When I complete a habit like eating fruit, I just long press to check it off. And when I swipe to the right, I can see my progress for the week and for the month. If you like me and want to start building good habits, then I highly recommend giving it a try. Moving on to the next one, Dropbox, an app that I use across all my devices. You might be familiar with what Dropbox is for actually, but there's a one feature I want to highlight in this video, that's scanning documents. I know there are many apps out there for scanning documents, I like Dropbox One because I can quickly scan any documents using my camera and it will just automatically convert it into a PDF file. Once documents are scanned, it goes directly to one of my Dropbox folders, which I can access from any of my devices. Have you ever found yourself mindlessly scrolling through social media, especially when you're in bed in the morning or right before you go to sleep? I am actually talking about how I used to be before I installed this app. This app is called Burnt Out Buddy. This app is totally free, and I think it also beats all other paid ad blocking apps. Once you download the app, you can create a new schema, then add the apps or websites you want to block. For me, that was Instagram and YouTube. Then you can set a schedule for when you want this to be active. For me, that's in the morning and after 10.30 p.m. Once the schema is activated, you will notice that the apps you've selected have a send glass icon next to their name, indicating that they are disabled. If you actually try to open the app, it will completely block you from accessing it. If you want to make it more challenging, you can also turn on strict mode. I've actually tested this feature just to see how hard it is, and here's what you have to do. I thought it was so frustrating. 
and it's also likely to make you realize how desperate you are. For me, using this app has made me get up in the morning so much easier. Lastly, it's Spotify. In this video, I want to share how I use Spotify. Since 2015, I've been creating monthly playlists even before I joined Spotify. It's been really great to look back and see what I was actually listening during a specific month. Honestly, it's pretty fun to listen to some of my old favorite songs every now and then. I like to customize playlist covers with some aesthetic images from Pinterest that kind of represent my mood for the month. Now let's dive into one of the most requested topics, how I use my camera for vlogging and how I edit my photos on my phone. First off, let me show you my camera settings. If you go to the camera settings, you will see the formats. I have most compatible selected and nothing else turned on. And in the record video section, I usually have 4K at 30 frames selected by default. But I also sometimes switch to 24 frames for a more cinematic feel. And I always make sure HDR video is off because, um, correct me if I'm wrong, as far as my experience goes, I don't think it's supported on Premiere Pro, um, which makes me really hard to do color grading on HDR videos when I edit on Premiere Pro. When taking photos or video, um, I also kind of find it frustrating when the camera just automatically switches the lens. So to prevent this, I turned on macro control in the camera settings. Okay, now let's take a look at some photos and videos I've captured on my 14 Pro. Just for those who are curious about the differences between the 14 and 13 models, I got some comparison clips for you. All right, let's talk about how I spruce up my photos. I actually don't post a lot on social media, so I don't usually use photo editing apps on the daily. But when it comes to making a thumbnail for my YouTube videos, Visco is the app I always turn to. I know there are tons of tons of photo editing apps out there, but I've been using Visco's for ages, like back when you had to purchase the filter packs individually instead of subscribing like now. I used to use free version, also kind of subscribe for a month and then cancel, but I found myself coming back to the app at least once a month. So now I'm on the annual plan. My go-to filter is usually the A6. And then I usually adjust the exposure, tone, saturation, and white balance. I don't have such a one-size-fits-all recipe, but if I'm editing similar looking photos, then I will save a preset as a recipe in the app so I can apply it to other photos that have a similar vibe. <music> Lastly, PS Express. To be honest, I wouldn't say this is the best app out there for background removal, but it kind of comes in handy when I am too lazy to open Photoshop on my laptop to do so. I actually don't know if there are better ones out there. If you have any better recommendations, please let me know in the comments below, but I feel like this might be the best free app I have found so far that works quite well. Before I go, I wanted to share a quick tip for keeping your screen clean. I love using these mini disposable lens wipes to clean my phone and other device screens. Of course, I also have a dedicated screen cleaner and cloth, but these wipes are super handy when I'm on the go. So thanks for tuning into my video and I will catch you in the next one.